Hey everyone, welcome back to Middlefield Sawmill. Today we have yet another maple. This one, I was gonna try and get four four by fours out of it, maybe six, but uh, this end is 13 inch. That's not the problem. I don't know if it's gonna work because up here there seems to be some rot, there's a hole. And over here, this is where you really see it. There's this big crack. So that really is going to cut down on what I can get out of this. But we'll start cutting it. We'll see what size can't we can get. And uh, yeah, maybe a six by six, maybe four by fours, maybe three and a half by six blocking. I don't know. We'll see. So cold start. This hasn't even been turned on yet today. Well, the rock turned out to be nothing to worry about. It's just a teeny little hole. That's pretty solid. Oh, gosh! That little limb was heavy. I got a decent flat. I'll take another inch off of that and then roll it over. Yeah, I think that's about the worst cut I've ever made. So definitely time for a new blade. And then I'm even going to take an eighth of an inch cut off of this just to flatten it out. Here, I'll show you. <clears throat> it isn't pretty. Look at that. Look. Down here, there's more. See? And that one. And over here, there's some. Then I slowed it down and it went pretty flat, but you can still see daylight. It's not, I mean, for rough cut, it's not bad, but it's not my standard. And then over here, it did it again. Look at that one. So, yeah, time for a new blade. Hi, welcome to Middlefield Custom Summit, where nothing can go wrong, go wrong, go wrong. In case you're wondering, that's my last 10 degree blade. I now have one box of 15 of the 7 degree blades to try. We'll see how they work. I used up 15 of the 10 degrees already. So 
So we'll see. Okay, so since that last cut goes like this, I'm gonna just take a leveling cut, maybe an eighth of an inch, and just see if I can flatten it out a little. a heavy slab. All right, let's see if it's flat now. What is this? Yeah, it's flat all the way down, but I'll show you what's going on. I don't have my speed adjusted right. See the sawdust here? That's pretty coarse. That's pretty fine. Well, when it's fine, you get the washboard. Now it's not really as bad as it looks. See when I brush it, it's only in one direction. So I'm not sure if that's all speed or if I got a, something going on here. I mean, I cleaned off the rollers. These are clean. Both of these, both of the big rollers in there. The blade's not bouncing, it's not loose. It's a nice flat cut. If I get the sawdust off this so you can see. I mean, it leveled it right out. But a washboard. easier working with these teeny little logs. Eight and five. I gotta raise that like two inches. Right. Wish I had hydraulic tow boards would be nice, you know? One of my YouTube buddies from uh, Bissell Maple Farm, his name is Nate, is telling me, put a motorcycle jack under there and just jack the whole thing up with that. That's starting to sound like a good idea. Right, let's see if I can lift it. Oh, little baby logs are so much easier. It's eight inches. Seven and a half. Close enough. So I did a little experiment there. I went real slow, then I went faster, then I went faster, and I slowed down again. So we'll see if the ripples go away due to speed. So going slow, I got ripples. As I sped up, they went away. Then they came back. Why did they come back here? I wasn't changing speed here. Then they went away, then they came back. Feel the vibration when I'm cutting. That was a pretty good cut though. That looks pretty smooth. Trying to get rid of this crack is really wasting a lot of wood on me. But I think I'm down to the
or I can just pull it off. A salamander. Where you going, little buddy? Get your animal. I'll go put him in some water. And you can see here. See these ripples on the side? You can see. You can feel them too. There's a couple here at the end, but here it's smooth. Looks good all the way up here. And then right here, from about here to here, there's some ripples, not bad. I mean, I could live with that. And here you can see them, but you don't really feel them. So, this sure looks like a blade. But it is speed sensitive. I mean, I was going at a constant speed through here and it cut beautiful. So yeah, I don't know. So I'm down to a nice solid cant. There is a crack here and the pith is kind of high. But let's see. We're at ten and a quarter by eight and a half. Those little holes are. It's not a little ambrosia beetle. It must be what those are too, because it's in a dark area. Pretty much all the maple trees have them around here. See there, you can see real well the, the hole from the ambrosia beetles. But look at that. Perfectly flat cut, same blade. All I did was set the speed higher and leave it, you know, stay at that speed. And this thing cut great. I cut a four by four, skip two inches, cut another four by four. That would work, and then that's just in a, a two by ten, which is totally useless for anything because it's got the pith in it. But. Okay, there's something wrong there. I've got a goofy cut on the bottom here. So I measure here, and it's 10 inches. It's 10 inches here, 10 here, 10 here. Measure at this end, it's 10 and a quarter, which is a lot of difference. So the bottom must swoop down a quarter of an inch somehow.
So yeah, a bit of stress in that. <laughs> I mean, I can get, I can get my whole hand in there. And it's down at this end too. I mean, this thing just bowed big time. So now I want to take two inches off. Let's see, here's the pith right here. So two inches will put me down here. Yeah. I could do that. I think an inch and a half would be better. Water splash. I only used half a jug this time. Maple's usually just white until you get into the heartwood, the, well, the juvenile wood. But I mean, it's some, some really pretty stuff. Very three dimensional looking. You can see all the little branches that were on that baby tree when it was a little oak. I see a couple of uh, ambrosia beetles made it pretty far in. Some more pretty knots there. Oh, it kind of looks like an eye. Anyway, that's what that board over there looks like. On both sides, not just on one side, it looks just like this on both sides. So I'm going to flip this now because I know the top is nice and smooth and flat. And like I said, it's thicker at this end than at that end, but from here down, it's the same thickness. So I'm going to see if I can fix that. nothing under it and it's not warped it's sitting flat on all the bunks real nice four inches high hardly going to take any off at this end Guys, see what happened? It cut a piece off here and a piece off here. So the log just bowed on me. There was nothing, the saw wasn't doing anything wrong. It was just the maple log, a lot of stress, and it bowed, made it thicker at both ends. It is four inches thick in the middle because it was rubbing, it was cleaning the dirt off. So I know it's it's four inches all the way down now. It's not bowed at all now. So I can stand it up, put the other one back up here, and cut them into four by fours. I told you, I just cut, the, come here you, I just cut the bow out of this one, but this one I didn't cut the bow out of. I'm gonna have to try and dry it. Look at, look at the bow in this thing. I mean, <laughs> holy crap. That's what maple does. So, I guess I'll just do my best. I'll try and dry the bow out of it. You know, I'll put it under something heavy so it dries good and flat. For this, I'm just gonna have to use my clamps here and squeeze it together.
So it was a pretty terrible log to start with, and we saw that. A big crack gave me this at this end. But we did get four 4x4s four four out of it. Come on, roll off there, you. All right, hang on a second, folks. I have to do this by hand. So, there's four 4x4s. Four four there's some juvenile wood in some of them, which is why they're bowing. But what I'm thinking is, those big workbenches I cut in the last video, I could use these for the legs. You know, just cut them off at like 26 inches. 26 and 6 is uh, 32. That would give me a 32 inch high counter. Workbench. Could go higher. But a 4x4, four four, an actual dimensional 4x4, four four, should be more than sufficient for a leg for a 6 inch thick slab. So we'll see. I'm going to put them in a stack under something heavy and see if I can keep them straight. But I mean, even this bow, you, know, you can really see it here. Watch. Okay, so that one's butted up there, right? At the end, they're touching. And then you can see the gap getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then at this end, it gets smaller and smaller and they're touching again. So yeah, it's bowed. This one's not too bowed. This one here, this one is straight. This one is bowed, but not as bad. And this one is straight. So, interesting. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.